Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Virgin Galactic says their Launcher One is the answer. Astronauts reach the midpoint of their one-year mission. Apparently, UAVs are fair game in Oklahoma. I'm Brie Cross. It's September 17th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Because of their relatively low cost and quick development timelines, small satellites are increasingly appealing. But despite their incredible promise and impressive results to date, small satellites cannot reach their full effectiveness without a launch vehicle optimized for their particular needs and capabilities. In a news release, Virgin Galactic says that with the Launcher 1, it can solve that problem and dramatically cut the cost of launching small satellites while accommodating customer needs for launch availability and flexibility. The company says it has made great strides in developing Launcher 1 since beginning work in earnest in mid-2012. The Launcher 1 team has already conducted extensive component-level testing of the vehicle's key systems, including the vehicle's first and second stage liquid rocket engines, composite tanks, avionics, and other systems. The company says it can launch a 440-pound satellite into orbit for less than $10 million. This report begs the question, are we there yet? Tuesday, September 15th was a midpoint for NASA astronaut Scott Kelly and Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Korinko of their one-year mission aboard the International Space Station. To mark the occasion, the National Press Club in Washington hosted an event on Monday to discuss the first-ever one-year space mission. Kelly participated live from the space station, his identical twin, retired NASA astronaut Mark Kelly, and NASA astronaut Terry Virts, who returned in June from his mission aboard the space station, participated in the conversation from the press club. The average International Space Station expedition lasts four to six months. Research enabled by the one-year mission will help scientists better understand how the human body reacts and adapts to long-duration space flight. After the break, eight UAVs bite the dust in Oklahoma. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at arrow-news.net. Okay, so we have to admit we have mixed emotions about this one. On one hand, we never advocate shooting down an aircraft or even shooting near one. And we've done several stories about the consequences of shooting at a UAV. In this instance, the UAV in question was being flown by a group called Showing Animals Respect and Kindness, or Shark. The group was using the aircraft to record video of a fundraising event put on by Oklahoma Senator James Inhofe supporters that involves shooting live pigeons that are released as targets. The group obviously takes exception to the birds being shot for sport and this year they used a UAV to capture video of the event until one of the participants shot it down. Shark filed a complaint with the local sheriff who said there was nothing to investigate because shooting down a drone is not illegal. The host of a Tulsa morning radio show was heard advising listeners that if you bag a drone you must carefully tenderize it prior to eating. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update. However, today our report is not about a member of the Aero Community. It's about the Aero Community itself and how you may fit into the picture. The Airborne Partnership Initiative, we call it the API, is a plan developed by ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to build a synergistic, industry-wide aviation aerospace news program. 
Our aim is to grow this program to include a significant portion, if not a majority, of the aviation world's pivotal organizations, interests, and viewpoints. Our hard work and planning has paid off with the new products introduction programs we've produced for the Aircraft Electronics Association and the smashing success of our AirVenture Innovations Preview broadcast from Oshkosh this year. These successes have proved we're on the right course. However, when we say the API will be composed of the aviation world's pivotal organizations, interests, and viewpoints, these words may be a little intimidating. We know who the big guys are, and a lot of them are already on board with the partnership. But partner membership has nothing to do with the size of an aviation organization or entity or with the amount of horsepower it projects. We know there are a lot of aviation organizations out there doing a lot of good work that could be valuable to the partnership as a whole. We simply need for them to stand up and be noticed or pointed out. The partnership wants to move aviation forward in a positive manner. If you know anyone in aviation that can help us make that happen, let us know. If you have an organization, a business, or an aviation entity, that you think would fit into the mission of the API, we'll listen to you and we'll bring your voice into the API conversation. After these messages, the Purple Passion flies to encourage cancer victims. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro tso airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. In April, pilot Jim Davis set out to fly his experimental Savannah XL airplane Purple Passion to all 48 contiguous states giving ride to cancer patients and survivors. The 74-year-old pilot suffers from stage 4 lung cancer and seeks to encourage others. Late last month, Sky Greece Airlines temporarily suspended operations. Since then, the company has been working to rebuild and resume services. The company says it looks forward to serving passengers again and is trying to take care of passengers who were recently affected. Sikorsky has selected Rockwell Collins to provide avionics for the U.S. Air Force Combat Rescue Helicopter Program. The avionics include the cockpit flight and mission display system, navigation radios, and the advanced ARC-210 communication system. The Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International says that more than 25 types of businesses have been approved by the FAA to fly UAS drones commercially. Topping the approval list are aerial photography, real estate, and aerial surveying. Bombardier's Global 7000 and 8000 aircraft program is making significant progress. The engines have been mounted on the first Global 7000 flight test vehicle, and a second test vehicle is in final assembly. Two additional test aircraft are in the works. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. This is a pretty slick deal. Now you can get a better airplane performance with a software upgrade such is the case with a software revision now available for the Gulfstream G280. The new Plainview 280 software offered in conjunction with supplier Rockwell Collins resulted in slower approach speeds, shorter landing distances, and enhanced flight management system performance. The upgrade reduces G280 approach speeds by up to 9 knots. The landing distance with the new software is 2,380 feet, a decrease of 270 feet. Flight management system performance is enhanced as well with improvements to basic time and fuel predictions, optimum and maximum altitude, 
and best rate of climb speed. New performance features are also included with the upgrade, allowing for automatic calculations for long-range cruise, maximum cruise, and maximum endurance cruise speeds. New G280 aircraft are equipped with the upgraded software, and current G280 operators can obtain the upgrade free of charge through Gulfstream service centers in Savannah, Dallas, and Lutton, England. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.